right, but tonight we were going to talk <laughs> to one of our other single family investors. We have Mr. Kevin up here, Mr. Kevin Bain. Everybody give him a round of applause. All right. <laughs> Do you want? He had to battle traffic to be here, as we all did. But <laughs> Look at all the people that came to see Karen Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? <laughs> Thank you, San Antonio native, four years of Spanish. <laughs> you got it. All right. You're welcome. All right. So, Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself and when you joined Lifestyles and what is it that you do? So, 2017, December 2017, uh, I actually went to two day finally in about March. The guy right there taught it. And, uh, With his purple drink? Yeah. Interface. Interface. Yeah. Interface. <laughs> And uh, I was just attracted to lifestyles because it gave me the toolbox that I was looking for to finally dive into real estate. What were you doing before that? I was uh, in sales um, and not, not very good in sales. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, so once I became an investor, uh, I wanted to do something that gave me flexibility. So I actually became an inspector and that's what I'm doing now. And it is his true calling, because the reason why he wasn't good at sales is because he's honest, so he can't. <laughs> Love it. All right, so you started investing in single family, and was it like Pringles? I don't really understand the Pringles reference. I think Pringles are gross, but something. <laughs> but the equivalent of the Cheetos, if you will. <laughs> kind of, it, it was. I've, I've, over the years, I've bought 15. Now, I'm, now I have 13 right now. We'll, we'll talk about those later. But uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty addictive. Well, how'd you hear about Lifestyles? Radio. I used to listen to uh, talk radio a lot. And what about, radio station? Uh, well, yeah, we're recording in the radio stations. We what, what radio station <laughs> was it not on? <laughs> 1,200 mostly. And uh, I must have heard that, that, that commercial about a thousand <laughs> times. And I finally decided to look into it. Yep. OK, so you heard about it. Something resonated, it made sense, and so you decided to check it out, did a little due diligence, came, sat through. Um, did you ask lots of questions? Uh, no, I tended to listen. I, I, I just listen and Again, he's very I asked you a lot of questions. <laughs> well, yes. She, she's, she's the mentor I called the most. My problem with her is I didn't call her enough, so. <laughs> He called, he called a good amount, though. Yeah. You, did, you did very well. OK, so we're going to talk about this one particular <laughs> subject property initially. So we have Coral Sunrise. So looks like, you know, spruced it up a bit. It's pretty. Yeah, I, uh, I tore the fence down myself. It just, I didn't, I hated it. You can see. Right? <laughs> but uh, but yeah. aren't all houses supposed to have white picket fences? <laughs> well, That's what John Mellencamp told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what attracted me to it. <laughs> All right, so you went in, and it looks like it wasn't a giant rehab. It looks like you pretty much just did a cosmetic remodel on this particular property. Was there anything other than the cosmetics behind this rehab? Uh, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> I think this one was pretty, pretty cosmetic. Pretty straightforward. Just pretty flooring, uh, cabinets. Uh, I actually reused some countertop because there was a slab of granite in there, so I was able to re reuse granite. Uh, all the fixtures, I think I redid the, the shower surrounds because they were pretty beat up. Or the shower surround, there was only one bathroom, I think. So just judging by that lovely original galley kitchen decor, you're probably looking at like a 1980s, early 1990s build. So basically just got in there, spruced it up, modernized it, because again, best product, best price. You weren't going in and putting in Viking stoves or sub-zero refrigerators. You're putting in what the market dicta dictates, what other properties in the neighborhood look like. And if you have a little extra, why not put in a pretty subway tile backsplash, you know, for Pinterest purposes. And then it marketed very quickly and looks pretty. Found a tenant. There's another really great picture. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there's a new shower, shower surround. Oh, I hate those, like, pop-ins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Tile's the way to go. <laughs> All right, so tell us about your numbers, Kevin. I got to read them because I can't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> this one is bigger. This is a fantastic side effect of buying multiple <laughs> single family properties. You're like, I kind of remember this one. Sounds vaguely familiar. 
Yeah. Haven't had to evict anybody, so obviously money's coming in every single month. Yeah. Um, so essentially, this particular property, you acquired it for 89, you did a $30,000 rehab, um, and you had an ARV of 160, which means when you take all of those plus your other costs, like your closing costs and whatnot, it totaled out to an equity capture of $39,400. So pretty cool. Uh, that equals a 141% return on your equity capture, which yep. again, whose IRAs are doing that? It's worth more now, actually, but. <laughs> well, I'm just curious, what do you think it's worth now? Uh, probably 185. So another 25 on top of that. Yeah. Absolutely, and you're renting it for 1550 a month, which means that you came up with that number by finding out what other properties in the neighborhood were renting for, and you wanted to make sure that it was priced correctly. You didn't want to have the highest rental amount in the neighborhood because you wanted somebody to move in. I wanted it to be the highest. <laughs> <laughs> we all want it to be the highest. But you're getting almost $500 a month in cash flow, which you can't really scoff at, so that's a close to six grand extra a year in your pocket, and you don't even remember the numbers on this property, so I'm assuming that it's it's operating quite well. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> and he's an engineer, right? Did I say you were an engineer? You're supposed to remember numbers. He is a home inspector <laughs> now. But I want to tell you, remember I told you at the very beginning, what do we typically, out of pocket on these? 15 to 40. You've seen two examples now, right in the middle of that. I said to you, we typically get 8 to 30 plus percent cash on cash return. What do you see here? 20s, right? And I didn't even talk about equity capture, but both of these were over 100%. You can see how this is a great way to start growing your net worth and a great way to start achieving financial freedom. Anybody do this kind of stuff when they buy a stock? Anybody buy it at a 50% discount and, and then get 22% dividend rate? No? Nobody? No game stoppers? <laughs> yeah, that is a good way to do it. We, that's my 401k to 201k example. So this is your whole portfolio of single family properties. So your 13 properties, you have given yourself a $1.3 million increase in your net worth, and your annual cash flow is almost $85,000 a year is what you were saying. Give me a hand on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you did, and it's a huge accomplishment, but you did want to like say something about this. Yeah, so. I finally got around to updating my numbers this morning, so those didn't make it in. Uh, I think my, if, if everything is rented out and uh, after adjusting, I'm actually at about 96000 a year. Because um, I think flow. it was yeah. cash flow. I think it was 8000 a month. Is the and you've already said that so, that the property that we just looked at has gone up in value, so there's actually more equity in there than your capture. What do you, th what do you think your net worth on those properties are? No, it's... Maybe I'm wrong about that because <laughs> I update about quarterly. I go and I update, and it, the market's a little softer right now. So it's about the same when you. Here we go with those analytical numbers. Yeah. Your current <laughs> net worth equity capture got boosted well, by one. <laughs> but yeah. it's not more than 1.3. I can tell you that. But okay, who here like me? We're sitting there working the W-2 job, going, "Geez, a millionaire just seems like." Ages away. Like, I am never going to become a millionaire. And he goes, when did you join again? 17. 17. So in seven years. Really 18. In 17 years, we're going to ignore all the cash flow you've gotten. And the other three ways that we make money in real estate, you've increased your net worth $1.3 million, more or less. We're not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the here's sad thing, okay? Huh? When there's a thing, sad thing on this slide. Yeah, 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 there's a sad thing. It's, it's a real, it's a, it's a real tear you, you are an engineer. I've done this. If you, I've done this with Jelly and most of the time, a few times. And when I do that, it makes me look at my numbers. And one of the things that I've realized is that I probably, you know, one of the things you'll learn from him. And if you haven't been. If you've been around for a long time and you haven't been, if you haven't been to two day in, in more than six months, you need to come this weekend. You need to come periodically. Uh, I didn't come for years. I came back and, and there were so many things that I forgot. And, and I realized when I looked at my numbers, I said, dang, if I would have done all these other things that they taught me three or four or five years ago, I could have done that twice. And a multimillionaire. I get, seven years. Really, the, the problem with, the, with that is there's a lot of sleepy capital up there. I need to redeploy, I need to sell and redeploy it. 
And, and, and I'm going to preempt something. You're going to learn. One of the things you need to learn is don't get rich slow. You'll learn about that this weekend. That's where I've failed the most in this. That's the hardest thing for us to teach yeah. is to keep, keep that money working hard for you. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, in my profession, I, I mingle with a lot of other investor groups around town, another, a few other educational cults. And, <laughs> and, no, and I, I'm, I'm telling you that because I know a lot about what they teach, and this is where it's at, people. This is where it's at. Um, and, and again, if I wouldn't have, there's a few uh, off the map, out of the box investments up there that don't fit in the, in the model. And when I look at them and analyze them in light of all the rest of them, they're, they're doing the worst. The ones where I got creative, the ones where I got too smart <laughs> for what this guy or that guy teaches me, they're not doing as well. So. So that is the one flaw in the model. It is so easy and so repeatable and so simple that we get bored with the complacency of it. It's like, I'm going to try something a little different. Because we're all smart people. We're all smarter than this <laughs> system that's <laughs> been tried and true that made everybody multimillionaires. I'm going to try something different. You're like, oh, that didn't work out. Yeah. So sometimes we need to get bruised. Anybody in here deviate from the model once or twice and learned your lesson? Come on, <laughs> that lies. <laughs> Part of the reason I actually, part of the reason I was excited to teach the two days, it forced me to, to understand the material. By the way, this is the book you'll get for those of you who come on uh, this weekend. And Dell says, there's no secrets in real estate investing. This is a compilation of 35 years of best practices in real estate investing. And that's what we teach you. And if you choose to deviate, you will not do as well. And we will be here <laughs> to say, I told you so. <laughs> All right, so tell me a little bit about how your life has changed since Lifestyles. Uh, it hadn't that much. <laughs> <laughs> he is the qu you, you see why he was bad at sales. <laughs> uh, I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. I do feel like um, I have a better understanding of what retirement really looks like. And um, you can afford the second wheel then. <laughs> 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 Um, you had to pay extra to have that second wheel taken off. So. See, I'm still cheap. I'm still cheap. <laughs> I only need one. I don't know about the rest of the uh, But I, I'm, I'm excited about, um, you know, because I've analyzed and, and realized I have a lot of sleepy capital, I'm excited about redeploying that. And I'm not going to, you know, panic sell all that stuff, but I am going to start getting rid of those and start redeploying it into other things as I build my inspection business. That's really a So lot that's of fun. my shameless plug that I'll go ahead and throw out there. Kevin's one of our home inspectors and I cannot stress this service that he offers enough, especially if you're doing a large rehab, which is phase inspections. Now everybody in here feels invincible and thinks they can take down a hundred thousand dollar rehab of a hundred year old house that's just completely need to be torn down to the studs. And it's very possible that you can but you probably don't know if it's being done correctly. So hiring an inspector to go out at the different phases before you start writing those blank checks to contractors without knowing that things are being done properly will, if, if nothing else is taken away, please take that. Don't just write your money, uh, write checks to people and give your money away without verifying that the work is being done. So Kevin has saved a lot of members, a lot of headaches and a lot of money. So that's my shameless plug. Back to the presentation. <laughs> so tell us about your short-term and long-term goals. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I need to redeploy that, that capital. Uh, I'm probably going to get rid of about half of that uh, right away. I might buy some more, sing, more single families. I'm, I'm having They're more fun, fun. right? They're fun. I'm having fun. Uh, I'm living through a lot of these guys now, uh, <laughs> watching them and helping them buy their single families. Uh, but. Uh, my problem was with that 13 properties is that's not really scalable, more, not for me. Right. I'm not willing to do what it takes to scale that. So I'm going to start doing more passive investments. That's scalable. Uh, my day-to-day -day I'm spending on building my business. Uh, I want to be able to say 20 years from now that I've been an inspector for 25 years. I mean, that's my big goal in life. Pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then people 
people that you have used from Lifestyles and the vendor program are uh, Lifestyles Realty. You used our agent that helps mm. you evaluate or source those deals. Most of them, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then. By the way, the worst ones were the ones that I didn't get through those people. So. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut corners. That's again. another thing I figured out this morning. I'm like, man, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're still you haven't lost money in real estate, so there no, you go. No. Um, you also used an insurance company, formerly known as CNC, now it's Texas Independent Insurance. Mm -hmm. um, Henry Novak, you used it for uh, your 401k lawyer. You've used uh, Rich Nunez from AMP Lending. Yeah. So you've got your little team built out. God's a miracle worker, yep. He is, isn't he? So fast, so fast. Well, that is, can everybody give Kevin a huge round of applause for sharing this story? No problem. Anybody have any questions for Kevin? Yeah, let's get, we got to have some questions here. David. No, I think it's important. He's very successful. He did really well. Go back to your first seminar, whether it was me or Dell. It doesn't matter who taught it. And there's new people here thinking about going this weekend. What advice would you give the brand new people? The question was, what advice would you give brand new people if you were sitting in the they're sitting in their first? And there are some. They raise their hand. So there's about ten of them in here. Let's yeah, you got to use the tool bag. You can't just have access to the tool bag. Your mentors, your education, there's endless videos. There's, uh, and then take action. Uh, and then come to the two day at least once a year, but I say quarterly uh, because you're going to, when you hear it again after you've done it, you're going to say, oh, now I understand why that's important. So uh, I go, I make an appearance almost every month. It's an opportunity for me to get to know more members. It's, it's a little bit marketing. But I've heard it from three guys now, or three teachers now, and they all have a different uh, emphasis or a different approach. And I, I uh, think that's a great point, because we all pr bring our own experiences and highlight different, slightly different things as we go through. It's the same material, but something I may say may not resonate with you, but something David says does, or vice versa. So I encourage you to see from different people. And it used to be David Fisher every time. You know, you hear the same jokes over and over. Kevin <laughs> <laughs> just said your jokes are played out. <laughs> All right, next question. Oh, that's a good point. I repeat, re repeat what she said for the she people She said, uh, Sylvia pointed out the networking. Um, Going to events, uh, getting to know other members who have uh, who have solved some of the problems that you're going to face. It's nice to have a uh, besides your mentors. Don't forget to call them, but calling friends. Hey, do you have a a plumber, or do you have a, a GC, or do you have? Um, and a home inspector, just call me. Or I know you have a property. <laughs> I know you have a property in this neighborhood. I just bought one. Can you tell me about your experiences in the neighborhood? How quickly did you rent it? That's the amazing thing about this organization is you never know who you're sitting next to. The person next to you could own the property next door. And it's fun. It's it's a fun group. Uh, go to go to the pickle after this. That's that's the best. The yeah. pickle. The pickle. The chicken. Yeah. Not the chicken. The what chicken and the pickle. If you got a chicken, you've gone too What are the questions we got out here? You mentioned you were going to sell some of those houses. Which ones are you going to sell? Which ones are you going to sell? <laughs> Which properties are you going to sell? I asked you, I cold call you about Waikiki in 2022. <laughs> we got you some. You did? Yeah. Somebody's, try, somebody's trying to buy his houses. <laughs> Networking. Oh. I'm telling you, we had a right of first refusal right here on the floor. <laughs> yeah, so for anybody that might be thinking about buying my right houses, <laughs> I'm not leaving any of the meat on the bone for you. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You got to go find one without floors. No, They're the best ones. Do, do your own friggin' rehab, man. <laughs> but he will give you the most updated inspection report. <laughs> on the rental income, how much tax did you pay? Uh, let me call my CPA. Huh? I, well, on that, nothing. I mean, that that offsets some of our income, I, but I don't know the I don't know the answer specifically to that. We will show you during the two day this weekend that if you're doing it right, there's plenty of ways to defer taxes indefinitely. Depreciation write offs. Yeah, we'll talk about it. One of my favorite sections of the two day. Quick. Are you self managing? Yeah, and I'm terrible at it. 
<laughs> I'm really, seriously, that's another problem that... that <laughs> He gets $96,000 a year cash flow and he's terrible at it. Well, that's when they're all rented out. So, full confession, and don't do what I'm about to. Because I'm so busy, I may not even notice that someone hadn't paid rent until like the 22nd of the month. Oh. I'm that, telling that, you. Okay, okay we're going to call that a first world problem. And we're gonna, like, I make so much money, I don't notice when people don't give me more money. So. I'm just, I, you gotta, you gotta work. I mean, it's not, you can't just, uh, they don't just plant a chip in your head and you know how to do all that. You gotta work, but you gotta But you can learn. call your mentor and I'll tell you about some software that'll automatically start sending reminders to your tenants on the 4th when they haven't received rent and immediately implement late fees and won't take partial payments. So. I just hate bookkeeping. I just. <laughs> all right, any question that won't be embarrassing? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of a closed book here. Uh, do we have any? The, the question was, what did Mr. Novak do? We cashed out a 401k without paying the penalty. We did pay the taxes, but we didn't pay the 10% penalty. And I know for some of you, like if you're like me, I was fully funding my 401k for years, and that. That was the reason I couldn't retire as fast as I wanted to, because all my money was in there. Henry Novak has figured out ways to get at it, and you don't have to touch all of it. You can touch a portion of it, and we, we'll talk a little bit about that this weekend. Uh, Novak is not one of the lawyers that makes all the jokes funny. He's actually good and useful. <laughs> he's, awesome. he's awesome. He's smart. Yeah, okay. Is Henry here tonight? Is Henry here tonight? I didn't see him. I didn't he see didn't, him. I didn't he didn't come him. up here. Earlier. He is on the vendor list. But he's on the vendor list, yeah. Uh, okay, so a question we got from online is, is Ken, uh, what is your name on the vendor list, your inspection business? Bain Inspection Service. Bain Inspection Free Service. Free commercials. Excellent. Um, isn't that a lot of, what is your last name? It is Bain. Bain. <laughs> B-A-I-N. That's, that's great marketing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, here's a tough one. What store does Kevin shop at for fashion? Uh, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've got these teenage kids, and they're, I don't know if, any, if you have teenagers, they go buy their clothes secondhand. Stuff just shows up in my closet. I don't know. I'm also going to point out that if your inspector rolls up in a really nice car in a three-piece suit, you're about to not know what's wrong with that house. So, just putting That's that good out. Point. I'm not good sure point. how to take that question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was John Everton. Uh, <laughs> were there any questions we missed? Him? There were a few that got buried. They were asking when you bought that property and how long the rehab took. Uh, I don't remember. Took about, <laughs> I don't remember. Probably what, 2019? Uh, I can look. It, probably about 19. Yeah. No, no. Maybe 20. Maybe 20. 19, 20. Uh, and it probably took about three months. They're also asking how you find your kind contractors who you like to use to Very rehab. Very carefully. <laughs> so I actually kind of GC'd myself. I had a couple of guys that could do all the drywall and countertops and install cap, and then I would get um, electricians and plumbers as I needed them. So I kind of did that myself. Well, I suspect as a home inspector, you get access to a lot of tradespeople too, so you probably know who, who who's who. Or who not to call. Or who not to call, yeah. I have a few not, I have more not to calls than calls. <laughs> That's usually the case, right? Always yeah. is. Anything else, Tim, that we missed? That's it. All right, any other questions in the room? I'll write <laughs> Call me. You know, the, the beautiful thing about the vendor list is if enough of uh, members complain about a vendor, they get taken off the vendor list, so they're not there. It's hard to tell you who's not on the list. So. But more importantly, when you are looking for a contractor and you're curious at how they're going to do, shoot us a line, hop on our networking or mm -hmm. Facebook groups, and just throw the name out there. Trust me, they'll give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you want to, more importantly, you don't want to call, have a contractor come in and be like, oh, how is this person? If they owe somebody money, you'll know about it. <laughs> any, any last questions? Jillian, I'd like you to thank you for taking us through. Thank Kevin's you. story. Kevin, huge, huge hand to you. Appreciate you sharing.